from you is understanding. How can we communicate if you don't hear what I say? Y'all don't hear me, y'all? Who can I run to <clears throat> to share this empty space up here? Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the escape feet. Just kick it. Just kick it. Hey. Just kick it. You just run to the arms of the one who loves you. You just run. This used to be my jam. To these arms and these two walls is my living in vain. Is my praying in vain. Tiny used to be holding down that soprano, huh? Them notes is not no crystal stair. <laughs> All right, y'all so tried to get y'all a little medley, a little medley. I, I really used to be able to really uh, could sing. I know y'all don't believe me. A while back, you know, when I sung on the choir on the regular, when I sung on my group before I moved. But now, honey, if you don't use it, <laughs> you will lose it. Okay, I need a warm-up. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, JoJo, and I'm coming to you with a review for Still Kicking It, Episode 2. I actually did record Episode 1 already. I just never uploaded it because the review was terrible. Um, I had made a lot of good points. The review in and of itself, the content was good, but y'all know that my channel is still, um, still our little secret. Oh, snap! <laughs> my channel is still a secret, and, um... When I'll be record when I'm recording in the house, I'm often like kind of quiet. So the review was quiet in the beginning, and then I got loud. So it just wasn't good, and I didn't want to put that out for y'all. Cause when I'm quiet, I always just I kind of just sound like this, and that doesn't really make for a good review. I got to be talking loud. <laughs> So, I got semi-dressed this morning and came on outside. I'm actually in the McDonald's parking lot, so hopefully it don't get too crazy out here. But, trying to hurry up because I still got to go to work today, girl. All right. I'm going to give y'all a little bit of my thoughts from episode one because I know y'all all have already seen it. So, I'm not going to do a breakdown. But, I just want to get my points clear so that when we go into episode two, nobody's lost on what I'm talking about. Let's discuss the fact that this show is not really doing any favors for candy at this point anyway so the episode one kind of went into the breakdown of what happened with the group and then why they decided to get back together you know the Jermaine Dupree thing and Tamika's apology and candy not really being comfortable and the reason why I say this show isn't really doing candy any favors is because candy We've grown to like Candy, most of us anyway, or at least have a lot of respect for her. Um, if you don't like her, you respect her business acumen, you cannot argue there. She didn't have the help of a husband or anything of that nature. She literally built her own brand, and I completely respect it. When Candy got onto this show, Candy already had high expectations placed upon her because people already knew who she was. She already had fans who had built a name and a respect around her. So for her to get on this show and kind of be um whiny um pessimistic um anxious constantly worried um holding on we've seen this candy on real housewives of atlanta and even when we see it on there we hate it and we don't want to continue to watch her do that we want like the kind of go with the flow candy and you know the candy that is a little bit um, happier and you know making some faces off to the side that's the candy that we're used to but this candy right here is very very hard to watch I understand where a lot of her um, emotion and her pain is coming from this is a girl group this is a group that she constantly felt out of the loop on um, which is I think what led her to make some of the decisions that she made in having um, a sexual relationship with JD that she's admitted to but um yeah, it's just something that we don't like to see, and it's not really doing any uh, Candy any favors at this time. So I hope that she is able to get it together, not only for the sake of the fans, but for the sake of herself. I don't want Candy to have that, that terrible image. I wish I would have been able to upload my episode one, because I kind of give a breakdown on each character and what role I felt like they played in the group, both past and now in the present. But we ain't got time for all that, so I'll just briefly say, you know, what I think is going on and what has led us up to this point. Um, even though Candy is getting on our nerves, Tasha, 
that does not allow me to excuse your behavior. I'm not going to look past the things that you're doing. You know what you're doing. You know that when you were in that group that you were a boss hog, as my, as one of my older aunties used to say, you were a boss hog and you probably did want to run everything. Candy is also very bossy as well. And I'm sure the two of you bumped heads in that, in that regard. Um, you are acting as if you have no clue as to what happened or to what's going on. And that's a little bit annoying because we know you know, okay? You even said that, you know, you're the voice of the group, so you do have a big ego. Um, nobody is letting you get by with that. Well, maybe some people are, but I'm not. So I'm not ignoring what you're doing. You also need to get your attitude together as well, if not for yourself, for the fans. Tamika, Tamika, to me, all of that rumor that she spread about Candy and going onto the radio, I think Tamika was pumped up that day. I don't really see that in her personality. Um, her body is out of this world. She made horrible decisions when it came to that butt that she has on her. She's constantly wobbling, but we're going to let her finish because obviously she's comfortable looking like that. Um, I personally don't believe the hype that Tamika had in that radio interview. I don't think she's a malicious person. I just don't get that out of her. Um, I do believe that she will ride behind her sister at all cost and a lot of times that's how it goes if she doesn't do it in vocal if she doesn't do it vocally then she will just do it in silence and let her sister do whatever she wants but for the most part Tamika and already let us know I don't care if I got a lead role or don't have a lead role I just want to be in the group and I just want to sing so gotta respect baby girl for that you got Tiny. Tiny is literally and figuratively the light of the group. Um, there's just an energy about Tiny that when you're around her, you can't be negative. Um, I just like the fact that Tiny is able to be neutral without being messy. And that is a talent that a lot of people have yet <laughs> to master. A lot of people are neutral, but sometimes in the midst of being neutral, they get to talking too much on one side. So I love that um, Tiny is able to do that. I believe she looks as... It, it, blah. I believe she looks at Candy as like her little sister and she really does try to be there for her. But at the same time, she keeps it real with her. And I can appreciate that. Like last week when Tiny told her, are you in or are you out? She spoke for all of us when she made that comment because that is exactly how we felt. I understand, like I said, the frustration with Candy. But like Tiny said, are you in or you out? At this point, we're doing a whole reality show. So do you want to be in this group or not? Yeah, I know you got to get comfortable, but... We got to forge ahead. Like, how, how long does your comfort take? Uh, that was kind of my thoughts on episode one. Um, and then that moves us into episode two, where the issues are still not resolved. So later, when they go into rehearsal, there's a conversation that gets started between her and Tasha, because they're really the ones with the issue. So Tasha is just like, well, what is your issue, Candy? Why are you not comfortable? What did I do? What do you feel like is going on? So Tasha kind of sits up and she points over at Candy. I'm, I tell you, now, Tasha ain't no punk. <laughs> she is very, very direct. And that is where her and Candy differ. And that, it's hard for Candy to take that because Candy's a little bit more passive. But Tasha is extremely um, direct. So she tells Candy, uh, look, what is your problem with me? I know what your problem is, Candy. You would always get mad. That, that was no issue back in the day. The issue was you would always get mad when I would have a lot of lead parts. You would get mad about that. And Candy said, girl, what do I I have to be mad about when it comes to doing lead parts when I got mad was when you tried to go solo but you used our third album to do it and I wasn't gonna let you be singing all the lead parts on the third album to catapult you <laughs> that's my favorite word today into your solo album and we looking like pips in the background no I was not going to do that Tasha was just like I was never trying to do that I was never trying to go solo and did you notice that her sister was looking down the entire time that's when I say Tamika will agree in silence if she don't agree no other way. Tiny was looking like she needed to say something, but she wasn't quite sure where to fit it in. Um, but Tasha knows what was going on. Okay, I'm pretty sure she was being told one thing by the producers, and the girls were being told another thing. But, you know, common sense. By then, I think they were in their early 20s. I'm pretty sure that Tasha kind of knew what they may have been trying to do with her, especially since JD told her directly that she should go solo tiny finally did speak up and was just like i mean yeah i'm that is true they really were trying to have us as your background and they really did tell us you know the only way we were going to get money for that album was if you were leading we were background and you know your solo project would come out right after we didn't even get the money um that we were supposed to get for that album so tiny told the truth on it she made it very clear 
I'm not sure if Tasha knew the ins and outs, but I personally feel like she did. And I think she knew what was happening behind the scenes. And I think she was working in that. But now that it's come out, I don't think she wants to look like the bad guy. But I think she knew. So Tiny and Tamika leave because the two of them, Tasha and Candy, need to have a personal conversation. So they get up and they walk out. When they have their personal conversation, um, Tasha tells Candy, what is your issue with me? Because this is about me and you. What's the issue with me and you? Candy tells her, I've always felt left out of this group. I always feel like nobody hears me. I always feel like it's you guys and then there's me. Tasha tells her, well, you know, you used to complain all the time and I can't see that. And Candy is just like, no, but still, are you understanding my point? Like, I felt left out. I felt left out of the group. And Tasha is just like, I don't understand how you got that. I don't understand how you got any of that. I felt like an older sister to you. I wanted to be there for you. I felt like your sister. I don't know how you got any of that. So Candy is getting frustrated because Tasha is not seeing her point. Then she tells her, you know what, you, y'all always have done this to me. I always have felt left out. And you know, your sister was there. And your sister always had your back. She always agreed with everything that you said. <laughs> She's just like, yeah, but that is my sister. You know what, if Patrick were here, well, child, why she mentioned Patrick's name, okay? Patrick is Candy's brother. Candy got even more worked up and was just like, my brother was dead before we even got our first deal. Don't talk to me about my brother. But what Tasha was trying to say was, when your brother was alive, your brother rolled for you, just like my sister rolled for me. It's no different. He didn't like us to argue and he didn't like us to fight. And uh, Candy even admitted, if my brother were here, the group probably would not have broken up um, as early as it did. It probably would have stayed together. And um, they shared that moment. And Tasha gave her a hug and was just like, look, I don't want you to cry. I don't want you to cry. Uh, my homegirl, y'all, I watched episode two with my friends so if I forget something this day fall homegirl was pissed when they made up not because they made up but she said that Candy does this a lot like she'll be really stubborn she will keep talking about her point she won't try to understand the other's point she won't let go she won't let the other person apologize she'll just keep saying well you did this to me and then she'll start crying until she kind of works that person to being on her side and I was just like mm. Well, you know, what do y'all think about that? Maybe my friend made a good observation because y'all know Candy will turn on the waterworks and that'll kind of get everybody to calm down. So anyway, y'all, her and Tasha kind of squash it, but you can tell that Candy still, she definitely still holds some reservations. Now, when Tasha and her husband go out to dinner, um, her husband pretty much tells the truth on it, okay? Her husband summed up the entire, you know, getting back together, the entire beef in all of two sentences. That's why it's good sometimes to have men on these shows because men are very logical and they can pretty much break it down with all the extra emotion. When they're having a conversation, her husband basically tells her, well, Candy does still have some issues. Candy does still have some problems and maybe her problem is stemming from the fact that, you know, She's having this thought that you went out, you went solo, that didn't work for you, and now y'all want me to come in and save this group so I can save y'all career, and uh, I don't have to do that. I'm already a mogul, and I'm already doing well on my own. And uh, Tasha's just like, I mean, maybe she does feel that way. And her husband said, look, if she do feel that way, um, you need to get her on the same page as you. If she got a wall up, it's your job as her sister to break that wall down. I said, you can talk all that sister talk all you want, bruh, but we all know it's about the almighty dollar. And uh, Tasha is just kind of nodding and understanding. And you can kind of see, a lot of people have said that Tasha's husband has played a strong role in like pumping her head up and trying to get her career started and you can tell that Tasha really listens a lot to her husband because when she goes into the studio with Candy it's a totally different Tasha that Tasha is playing nice that Tasha is agreeable that Tasha is not trying to bump heads with Candy at all and uh yeah she, she definitely simmered down after that conversation with her husband but um, her husband makes some good points, okay? Candy is the mogul. Candy already has it together. She's already done well. She already got money. Now she probably feels like she is coming in to save this group. Now, personally, I think that Candy is doing this more so for the fans and less for the money. Um, and I think that Candy wants people to see that she can get past things. But like I said, Candy girl, if you want people to see that, you need to work a little harder because I watched what, what, watch what happens live tonight and... 
that was horrible. That interview was horrible. You could see the tension. It was awful. It was awful. So I'm I'm nervous about what this show is gonna do for Candy. I really am. We get into a little conversation about Tamika, and we find out that Tamika was pregnant um, on one of the albums. I think it was the second one. She was 19 years old. Everybody was mad at her. Even one of the um, managers at the time told her that she had the option of either leaving the group or getting an abortion. And Tasha told them, "Honey, if my sister gone, I'm gone too." And then y'all know, y'all know that management probably straightened up quick because Tasha and Tamika, I mean. Let's not front, okay? We we know that they are the power vocalist of that group. I know that Candy sung the lead, but honey, Tasha and Tamika brought the pipes. It's not up for debate with me. We get a little glimpse of Tamika's weird but funny family. I just, when I saw them come up on the screen, I was just like, everybody looks just alike. <laughs> And they all kind of had like this weird, quirky way about them, even Tamika. But it was still funny and it was still good to see. Uh, Tamika and her husband are nasty. I can just tell. I can I can see a nasty couple from a mile away. We do catch a little glimpse of her husband and he was handsome. But I can just tell that the two of them get real nasty. From the way that she was talking and gushing, she couldn't get control of herself. And, um... You know, the way that he was looking at her, I was just like, ooh, child, I bet you it goes down. <laughs> so the daughter that she had when she was 19 is now getting married to this guy who looks just as strange. I mean, the whole family, it looked like some of them people that you just kind of be like, y'all are so freaking weird, but they're fun. And you like hanging out with them. Her whole family looked like that. And they all just look like a bunch of triplets. You know, all the girls look like uh, Tamika. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny, but it was good seeing her family. I like Tamika. I think that she's like the comic relief of the group. When they got into rehearsal and I found out she was saying to fill this empty face full of laughter. <laughs> Both of them make sense, but it was just funny that she's a group member. She just now figuring out that those are not the words. In that particular rehearsal, uh, Candy was upset because everybody was late. She told them that they really need to start getting there on time. Uh, Tiny told her, do you know the steps? No, ma'am. <laughs> That's still like no excuse for you being real late, Tiny. The choreographer do come in there, y'all. It was bad. I was just like, Andrea Kelly going to have to put a little bit of prayer on it because it just... First of all, the other three girls can dance. Candy can't dance at all. And um, I find it so interesting because Candy got a big old butt. You know, usually when you got a butt like that, you think you know how to move it. But she ain't really got no rhythm, I guess. But I did see her bust a split wide open on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Never forget. Go look it up if you don't believe me. She was having some trouble with the dance moves. I was just more interested in looking at Andrea Kelly because that body is bomb. She looks so good, but... Yeah, them dance moves ain't all the way right. And even Mama Joyce, okay, Mama Joyce came into a rehearsal and she was just like, listen, let me tell you girls something. Y'all don't need to be doing all that dancing because y'all is singers, okay? People don't want to see you gyrating. They want to see you sing. Uh, so she broke it down to them plain and I appreciated Mama Joyce. You can tell they have a lot of respect for Mama Joyce. Even Tasha said she used to talk to us about boys. She used to buy us clothes. She used to be at our rehearsals. We would come to her house. Mama Joyce was like everybody's mama. So they had a lot of respect for her. Uh, mama Joyce had said to them, uh, said to Tiny, you don't marry for love. You marry for support. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess that uh, Tiny took heed, but she took heed in both ways. Because y'all know she loved that man. But, um, but yeah, they performed for Mama Joyce and she gave them her opinions. And they really respected her opinions. And it was good to see like a, a non-nasty side of Mama Joyce. I'm trying to think, did I forget anything about the show? Not really. They're still just trying to pull everything together, trying to get these moves right, trying to get these steps right, trying to get their timing right, trying to get their voices right. Um, Candy and Tasha are still trying to play nice with each other, but you can tell they're having some difficulty. Candy, I think she does still feel like the person on the outs, but I really don't know what they can do about it. I'm, I'm starting to wonder if it's a personality flaw because Candy... I don't know, like, she's not a go-with-the-flow type person, and I understand because I'm not either. So sometimes that can make you feel like the odd man out. Now, I'm more go-with-the-flow go than Candy. I'm more go-with-the-flow <laughs> the than her, but 
She is just having a really hard time. I think her and Tasha need couple counseling. I do. They need to be on marriage boot camp. That's the only way that we really going to get this group going the way we need to get it going. Because them two... Child, I don't know. All right, y'all. So that really was it. On the next episode, we'll talk a little bit more about... um the JD situation and we'll get to see some of that sexual tension because honey I saw it all over both of them I don't care what y'all say when I saw that little snippet I was just like uh oh I see the tension I see the tension but yeah y'all that's it I hope I didn't leave anything out like I said blame my homegirls because I was watching it with them and they was trying to give me all their commentary that's why I don't live tweet I can't focus so anyway that's it we'll see you back for the next next episode and thanks for watching talk to you soon bye